Reporting on multiple sightings. Good day, everyone. I ride around my layout and we'll drop off some cars and work our our schedule for the day and point out what's going going to happen. Here we have a diagram of my layout design. Basically, it's a square, <laughs> and um, I have an 18 by 18 foot square living room with my O scale trains up on the valance of the near the ceiling. So I can make a complete circle in my living room uh, can, and have a continuous run. Using our imagination, we could just uh, kind of take a chunk out of that right hand bottom corner and turn this into a point to point. And this is kind of what we would be looking at with a point to point layout with the uh, stretching out my walls into a, a linear shape. And we have the interchange siding first as we run uh, right to left or counterclockwise going around my walls. We would first come to the Braden siding uh, with our cars, switch out, uh, drop off the first few uh, that need to be left behind there and pick up any cars and put them on the end of the train that need to go on uh, and back to the interchange. Now, from the Braden siding, we would then move over, uh, you know, through the bridge and then onto the Pitchfork siding and drop, uh, pick up any cars that need to be picked up there and then uh, drop off the remaining cars before we head on back to the interchange. Uh, and that would be uh, all we need to do in the two sidings in this town uh, to do all the switching. And so come along with me today as we go ahead and get aboard the engine and switch out our cars. Starting at the interchange, the engine pulls in here and will pull the whole string of them out with all the cars needed. So let's take a look at what cars are picking up today. Looking at my work order list, I have the Pittsford siding and the Brandon siding, uh, all the cars that need to be dropped off and picked up. We have 24183, a boxcar with dry goods going to Pittsford. We also have um, a flower hopper and a sugar hopper. And going down and looking at Brandon. Now, Brandon will be our first stop. And Brandon's going to have uh, 24257. Uh, also a box car going to the dock and then another box the 2502 uh, that is not with us today so we won't be dropping that one off so we got four five cars to drop off two are Brandon uh, any uh, and, and not to worry about the ones that say pull whatever's there we're going to pull anything that's on these sidings we're going to pull and take back you notice my engine's on the wrong side of these cars. Uh, that is because this siding is facing differently. It's a it's a left hand switch, while the other sidings, Brandon and Pittsburgh, are both right hand switches. You really don't have to have a runaround track because you have a big circle, and uh, with a big uh, loop like this, you can you can run around the cars, pretend that uh, you went to uh, and you ran around them uh, without actually building in a runaround in your design. I got my engine on the correct side of my train with the Brandon cars up front and the Pittsford cars behind that and I'm ready to go. Normally in a railroad situation whenever they have to run around a train it costs them time and they don't really prefer to do that so um, at some point uh, I will redo my uh, interchange track and put a right hand switch in and remove the left hand switch 
coming around or heading down the track and heading toward the Braden siding, which is uh, not too far from the interchange track. So uh, usually um, what would happen is coming out of a yard, uh, the engineer would stop at all the trailing sidings along the route. The first few cars uh, would go to siding, the first siding they come to, the next couple cars blocked off would go to the next siding, and then the, the, the next few cars go to the third siding they come to. If they come to a siding that they're facing, they will bypass it and go to the next one as the third or the fourth. Continuing down to the end of their route until they're able to run around the cars that be, are being picked up to a runaround track and then returning back to the home yard. As they come back to the home yard, uh, they will then have the sightings that they skipped and start dropping the cars off for those. So here we are, we're going to stop off at the Brandon siding and begin backing in. And the first thing we're going to do is, since we're going to pick up all cars, we're going to back the whole train into the siding and pick up those cars that were left there from previous work. Now, at one point, I had considered, you know, Brandon to be a town and uh, Pitchfork to be another town, and a lot of train uh, uh, layouts are designed with several different towns every time you have another signing. Um, but I find that this cuts into the um, the actuality of believability. Uh, I I rather have two signings um, thinking that are you know within reach of each other in the same town and work it that way. So in this case I just continue to call Brandon siding Brandon and and the Pitchford siding Pitchford. Uh but in in my mind they're really all in the same town with the interchange track. I'm I'm gonna cut through and edit edit through time in order that we can go through the sequences without spending a half hour, 40 minutes doing the work and you having to sit through a 40 minute YouTube video. So in the next 10 or 15 minutes as we work through these, I'm going to I'm gonna keep the action pretty slow and steady, but I will be cutting and editing out gaps of time in order to, to keep the flow going and not have an extended lengthy uh, video. But as you know, I do prefer to run my operations at a slow, steady pace, a realistic pace, if you want, uh, moving the cars through and giving the conductor time to go in between trains, uncouple, set brakes, whatever needs to be done. That is the three-point protection, putting the the reverser into neutral, setting the generator switch, and of course putting on the brakes. And then once the conductor is clear and they can uncouple, they can then engage the generator, and take, uh, cut off the brakes, and then put the engine in forward or reverse, depending on which way they're moving. So in essence, what I'm trying to do here is what an actual railroad would do is keep it as simple as possible, the least amount of moves, the least amount of switching, and not unnecessarily complicate things. Uh, the simpler your track design, the more prototypically operational it will be. Oh, so here we have we dropped off uh, on the on the branch line we dropped off the cars that uh, they're going to go on with us and then uh, pulled the first couple up front that need to be dropped off at the branding siding and there's two cars and so we switch those into the siding and then we can go back and collect 
the remaining cars and then move on to pitch forward uh, heading down our line. On this particular wall in my track design, uh, I don't have any sightings, so I can head over the bridge and then uh, head on. So I like to keep my uh, engine speed to about 35 miles an hour, which is uh, almost, uh, well, not painfully slow, but it's a fairly slow rate uh, on the throttle and uh, 10 miles an hour scale speed would be very, a, a creep in, uh, in a sense. So I'm heading around this curve probably about 15 miles an hour or so I think is what I'm running. I had at one point uh, take the length of my full design and time how, how long it takes an engine to go around and kind of clock uh, different engine speeds and kind of got a feel for when I'm going 15, 20, or 35 miles an hour. All of these are fairly low uh, settings on my throttle. This switcher I have is the RS1. It, it's an Atlas engine. It does not have uh, the preferred motor in it with the double flywheels. It has the two China drives, which is not preferred, but when you oil everything up, it runs very nice, and I hadn't had any difficulties with uh, running at the, the speeds I want to run. Um, it is nice with the modern Atlas engines having the one motor with the two uh, flywheels uh, that run much better, but uh, I've been satisfied with the running of this engine. So here I'm at Pitchfork. I just uh, dropped off my next set. Of course, as always, the, it's the next block of trains that is closer to the engine with the cars being pulled at the rear and it's easy for me to just uh, put in the box car that one uh, on my work order showed the box car to go down deepest and then the next two I could pull together and then slip them into the siding and be done with the work order for the day Now back into the siding as we uh, finish up our work. Now one of the things you can see is I'm really still on the construction like a lot of people are in their in their layouts. Uh, this pitchfork siding, there's, there's, hard, there's no paint there, there's no buildings pretty much. Uh, on a ceiling layout there's very little actually I can put in this, uh, but I could put in some spots for the um, hoppers, uh, some kind of prop in order to, uh, to designate that. But that doesn't stop me from operating, uh, even if I wanted to put down a you know, color stickers or something in, in the meantime to show exactly which spot each car would go to. I could do that, but uh, in the meantime for this uh, day's work, I'm just pushing the box down further and then the flour and sugar uh, hoppers in uh, last. And then I can come up, uh, grab the rest of my empties that I pulled from Brandon as you can see on the pitchfork siding, there wasn't any cars to be pulled. 
and uh, and now I'm finished, and I can continue on uh, back to the interchange uh, to drop those off and be changed out for the next uh, working day.